all we can do to begin to get rid of this devastating We've got 2,000 uh, positions in the bag. We've got uh, we've got land sufficient to take over a thousand of the positions in the in the area. Uh, and uh, we hope that we can uh, 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 return. have no option but to pursue the application in this manner because uh, the mechanisms aren't in play in this authority that there are in the other Merseyside authorities who are looking to, who are dealing with the same issues but addressing those positively. By reviewing the Green, By reviewing the green Belt and looking to release Greenfield sites for new housing development, that is not the case or that is our understanding situation in the world. So can I ask why the why council was so sorry to me, but why should the council need to think of the kind of more expensive choices to the doing the redevelopment policy when they've got that more money to the amount of land that could be to the exactly. 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 but it's only it's only adequate, isn't it? If that land is built out. If it's not built out no houses come forward. So how can you boost significantly the supply of houses if you're relying on sites which were for whatever reason um, are not going to come forward? It is, it is actually acknowledged as well in the emerging core strategy. If we're a that is not delivered, then effectively piecemeal releases of Greenfield site will Greenfield sites in the Greenfield may be necessitated. However, I do acknowledge that they are being directed to the latter periods of the plan, plan delivery. I mean, uh, one issue I have here, how small is the green belt on the wheel? But if the green belt is becoming more and more marginalised all the time, it's people like these developers that are doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm awfully sorry, but I mean, the, the, the invasion of, of into the green belt on the wheel, into this tiny area of about 36 miles, mm -hmm. about 16 miles uh, width, mm -hmm. is absolutely um, evasive and enormous. And it's a, a major concern for the council and everyone else. Oh, and, and, you know, it, it's just the way, again, this is sanitised by her. I'm just, you know, not very happy by the way we have this discussion. Everything is wonderful here. Things are not wonderful here. This is a very, very serious issue. And particularly from the point of view of the local Well, I, I understand yeah. that completely. Um, I understand the pressures that council are under up and down the country for releasing some kind of sites in green. Yeah.
wait until the RSS figure in the absence of anything else. We've got nothing else to use. We've only got the RSS figure. Is the only figure that's been proven sound through the public examination of all the other figures you can make are whether they end up being sound or not, or the end of the examination, or even submitting them to the circumstances? I think the key point at the end of the day is that developers will always prefer to develop free field sites in preference to those within the urban environment. And it's been a great policy of the Wilbur Council over many years to pursue the idea of urban regeneration and consolidation of development within the urban area, whilst retaining a strong green belt, which is essentially, as Councillor Ellis said, to the policies that make this peninsula so very special. And granting of commissions like this one would, I feel absolutely sure, give a signal to many other developers or others of that that they have got the opportunity now to start nibbling at the edges of the green belt, saying, oh, this is actually going to affect the green belt very much. It's just a small, localised development. But it won't make any difference. But cumulatively, the effects of such decisions, if they're made in favour of this sort of development, will, I'm sure, make for great difficulties in the future in resisting further applications in other areas as well. We've already seen that the application was just for extensions to support the stables and to a lot of flats. The developers are already using that for lever to get them on the site. That's the first thing they mentioned in the representation. They're using that as a lever already. We have no option because that's the nature of the authority, that they are resistant to development outside of the urban area. So it was a step that was going into... There was the green belt. I mean, again, it's just... But conversions in the green belt are not inappropriate. I've just explained that we're on 36. It's 36 miles away by 18 miles away. With a tiny area of green belt that has been totally marginalised time and time again because of the vagaries of planning law or how planning law is being interpreted, which I could write a book about, and the planning strategies as well, by the way. But that's what the... But our difficulty as the planning inspector is that we have to implement government policy. Yeah, but you know there's inconsistencies. You know the planning inspector can come down and have two identical decisions and come to two different inspectors and make two different inspectors' decisions. So the problems of the planning inspector is a story in itself. So the planning inspector is a classic example, are they? Well, I'm not here to defend them. I don't think for one moment we're saying we do not agree with the regeneration. We think it's essential. What I would say is, though, that all those sites which were targeted for regeneration, they already have planning consents and they've not been delivered upon. So the consents are there. Some of them in phases have, but there's a number of master plans in HMRI. We've had maybe phase one built out, but in certain circles, not even phase one has hit the ground, and that's consented probably back.